You ever get a hair in your favorite food? My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. These albums were thoroughly disappointing. We had high hopes, and they, you know, let down. Check this list out. Merker Spine. This album disappointed me because it was very inconsistent with its delivery. A couple of songs on here, most notably the beginning tracks, are kind of disjointed and messy. Then the album gets good, then it gets a little weird, then it's over, right? The pacing is really off on this album. Is it ambitious? As with most things under the Mirker moniker, yeah, it is ambitious. That doesn't make it a listenable album from front to back, however. Before we kick this off, I want to welcome the new viewers into The Forge. We got a lot of new people who joined the community this year. We're trying to hit 20,000 subscribers and we're so close. Don't miss out. Smash that button. We're gonna piss off some Metallica fans. My first disappointing record was 72 Seasons. I really wanted to like this record. I was excited about some of the singles when they dropped, but when I finally took 72 Seasons for a spin, the problems really started to show. The album was extremely bloated, lacking in dynamics to justify the song lengths and just way too overly produced to the point of where the drums in particular were surgically precise. The solos were also grossly uninspired, often noisy and directionless and overly saturated with unnecessary wah effects. That's always been the case with Kirk Hammett to some degree, but it felt like he gave way less of shits here. Some of the lyrics too are fairly cringe as well. Hetfield often reaching for lines that sound far too much in the preach department with some eye rolling rhymes. It just didn't really land for me. I will say that there were some cool moments though. If Darkness Had Us Hun had it some really catchy and heavy sections and Inamorata, probably the best song on the album. The closing track has some killer ass riffs and a more mid-tempo rock feel. That really works for this band now in terms of style. Overall, this album was a big, big miss for me. Way too long, very little substance. In Autumn for Crippled Children, Closure. I love when a band finds a sound, makes it their own, and dominates that landscape. On paper, this band checks a lot of lists for me. Post-black metal, shoegaze, post-rock influences. Yeah, man, sign me up. Closure marks the band's 10th release in just about as many years. This has done the band a disservice as they've never let off the gas to regroup, find inspiration to do something, and find inspiration just to do something more inventive. Unfortunately, it's just another mediocre release from a band that showed serious potential in the beginning of their career, but they've just never grown. Code Orange, the above, I absolutely loved the underneath in 2020. Code Orange quickly became a band that I admired and highly respected, experimenting with tons of sounds from unrelentingly brutal hardcore to electronic and also grunge vibes. Upon the release of The Above, it became evident that Code Orange had pushed their artistic boundaries in terms of style, chemistry, and musical craftsmanship maybe a bit too far for my tastes here. The single Take Shape with Billy Corrigan was highly enjoyable though, and I did really like hearing Billy give his raspy, ratty voice to Code Orange's brand of madness.
Overall, though, the album just offers an incohesive array of fairly uninspired tracks, standing out like a sore thumb within their exceptional discography. I think I mostly enjoyed the songs that captured the essence of Underneath, but the sections that leaned into more of a contemporary sound, I just did not care for. The latter part of the album felt somewhat shallow and underwhelming, and it made me miss the inventive burl that the band is by far known for. Nita Strauss, The Call of the Void. This album is wild. This album is wild with contrast, Forge Mates. Some of the best songs of 2023 are on here. The Wolf You Feed, Consume the Fire, and Momentum are absolute fucking rippers, with The Wolf You Feed easily being a top song of the year. And then you have songs like Digital Bullets and Dead Inside, which are butt rock anthems that have no right being alongside a song like The Wolf You Feed. Ew. Nita is onto something here, but if she has one foot in the extreme camp, in the other, in the contemporary camp, it's just not gonna work. Sixty Nine Eyes, Death of Darkness. The Sixty Nine Eyes, they make a return here with their thirteenth record, The Death of Darkness, showcasing over three decades of goth and roll prowess. One of the pioneers of the genre, their latest offering combines glam infused hard rock with touches of nineties gothic melodrama and surprising ventures into American country. Sort of unexpected. Throughout their extensive career, the band has embraced changes in their sound evolving from gothic romanticism to more radio-friendly hard rock. This album feels very radio-friendly hard rock, and it's flat-out boring, dude. While the album exhibits diversity incorporating a southern gothic duet with Kat Von D, titled This Murder Takes Two, There's a question of coherence in the fusion of American-driven rock and the band's gothic heritage. Despite the energetic instrumentation, the album leaves a sense of something missing, really missing here. Perhaps longing for the days of when the 69 Eyes embraced the larger-than-life gothic persona reminiscent of the Fields of Nephilim or the Sisters of Mercy. Death of Darkness raises questions about the evolution and their sound for me, leaving me pondering whether this signifies the end of an era for the band. Bring back the fangs, boys. We miss it. Penumbra, Eden. On paper, this band has everything I want. Symphonic goth metal, beautiful female vocals contrasted by haunting male vocals, unique instrumentation, etc., etc., etc. This album truly failed to deliver on all fronts, showcasing an entirely bland demonstration of the aforementioned musical elements. Out of the nine songs on here, maybe one is worth its weight in listening time. Outside of that, there's a slew of amazing gothic metal that should be listened to before this one. You could grab a song for playlist, otherwise don't waste your time. This is a divisive record. We all know that. Sleep Token, Take Me Back to Eden. Sleep Token's mystique is fueled by anonymity, masks, and a shroud of enigmatic branding. Every time I see the band in their garb, though, I just think it's a Zelda Breath of the Wild band. Think Yiga Clan metal. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it doesn't really work for me. Sleep Token claim allegiance to an ancient deity named Sleep. The deity, I guess, presents their vocalist as the vessel, and their music is a quasi-religious thing. I don't really vibe with that. Neat, I guess. But I didn't know what the 
fuck was happening? Because I've barely been sleeping since my wife got flipped. While loosely categorized as a metal band, and I mean loosely, Sleep Token's album Take Me Back to Eden challenges the conventional understanding of metal. Tracks like D-Y-W-T-Y-L-M, Granite, and Aqua Regia echo Imagine Dragons in the worst way and feature auto-tuned pop melodies, atmospheric keys, synths, articulate vocals, and some synchronized drumming. Moments of darker, heavier sound emerge though, sporadically introducing some gent-like riffing and growls before reverting to dreamy pop and gentle vocals again. The opening track, Chokehold, teasingly hints at a heavier album, and I think that's where I felt duped. I love that song. Overall, the album is an incoherent mess. The record falls victim to track single culture and the resulting album feels needlessly slapped together. Bellwitch, Future Shadow Part 1, The Clandestine Gate. What do you guys see in this band? I don't get it. Let me start by saying that Funeral Doom is, nine times out of ten, bland and unforgiving with its boring nature. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear, and it absolutely will not stop. Ever. Ever! Just keeps going and going and going and never changes. You guys do you... This is not for me. I just can't get behind it. I'm not sorry. October Tide, The Cancer Pledge. Listen guys, this one absolutely pains me to put this album on this list, simply because I love this brand of sad boy, sullen, melodic doom, and I absolutely love October Tide. First of all, the album title is fucking abysmal. It makes me feel like I'm just going for a walk and raising money for a cause. It just does not feel metal at all. The band does keep some of their signature sound and showcases the Norman Brothers expressive and depressive of guitar leads, which is a big plus for me. Where the band changed here though, and I think where it was a miss, was where October Tide embraced a shift in tempos influenced by the drummer, Jonas Skold. What we get is a departure from their traditional doom sad boy sound and embracing melodic death metal with progressive elements. Normally this increase in speed would absolutely be fine for me, but here's the thing. While some tracks maintain the classic October Tide vibe, the faster tempo took this band out of why I love them. The Cancer Pledge ended up being just disjointed and a run of the mill mid melodic death metal record. Sullen, slow, and full of melody is what I absolutely love about October Tide and that's just kind of barely here. I absolutely hate that I had this band on this list. It's a bummer. Or some of the worst metal albums for you in 2023, leave them down in the comments below. We got some cool ass merch too. Check that shit out and check out some of our other videos right here. Go with the gods, Forge Mates. May you never be disappointed.